Hello there, everybody. We are back for episode two of React on Titan. I guess uh, it says episode six in the description, but that's because we're reacting to Attack on Titan, the final season, episode six. And I didn't want to say the word episode in the uh, YouTube title twice. So, um, so there we go. Um, but yeah, so we were reacting to the episode known as the Warhammer Titan. It is... Um, Picking up hot from on the heels of the incredible ending of uh, last week's episode, episode five, where Aaron um, changes into his attack titan form and bursts through the, I guess, what is he, in a hotel or something? Bur bursts through the, the building that he's in and uh, presumably kills um, the gentleman on the screen here with his family, uh, Wh Willie Tiber. Um, and, uh, as, as the episode opens, we find out that, yes, uh, he, Willie Tiber was in fact killed. Um, but before we even start going through the play-by-play, -play, uh, let, let's go around, uh, starting with our guest, Geeky Pixie. Welcome, Geeky Pixie. Uh, what Hello. did you think of this episode? Like, overall thoughts? It was crazy. The way the scouts were just basically toying with the other army. Taking them out and ziplining around them. I actually like that. Yeah, it was pretty nuts. Lethal Lightning, what about you? Immediate thoughts? I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought the last episode was slightly better, but this was fantastic, action-packed. It's like a 24-minute episode, but it felt like five minutes. X-Ray Girl, yourself? Um, are you muted? Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot about our thing. We're in the same room, so I got to remember to mute. Um, it was awesome. It was not long enough. Like the moment that it stopped, I'm like, this is just getting a more amazing right now. I need to see more. This just sucks that the next episode was not just sandwiched on top of each other. So I know waiting a week is like the most painful part. It's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do for a whole week? Just sit here. It's like back in the day when you had to really actually just wait a week. They're just lucky there's no commercials because I probably would have been like, Argh. yeah, <laughs> giving yeah. it to the man. <laughs> Yeah, thank God for that. I didn't even think of that whole no commercials thing. I wouldn't. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, that's a scary thought. All right, yeah, I'm muted. Um, so, yeah, my thoughts. I, I pretty much agree with it with everyone. I was uh, really blown away by a lot of the action in the episode. I thought it was super cool to see the new um, omnidirectional gear with uh, they had like the kind of semi-automatic pistol set up and with the thunder spears, except for one which uh, I guess we'll, we'll talk about talk about the person who was rocking the old school blades at the end of the episode. Mm. That, that was a fantastic moment and I'd rather not jump to it. Uh, just one thing, uh, Geeky Pixie, uh, your uh, baby is uh, audible. Not your baby, but the baby that you live with is audible um, on the mic. So uh, maybe maybe just mute when you're when you're not talking. Um, <laughs> I was looking at the chat. Lethal Lightning's crying, baby. <laughs> the question. We X Ray Girl and I have not have not bred yet. Uh, so it was not our baby. It's Geeky Pixie's roommate's baby, I believe. Even I thought uh, that was fucking weird. <laughs> we've, we've, we've got uh, two baby puppies that I believe are both on X-Ray's lap, although one of them's 10 years old. But uh, no, no human babies. Um, all right. So, yeah, I guess we'll start pawn through the episode. So the first scene that happens here um, that we can see on screen. Hold on. I'll see if I can maybe get this thing full screen for everybody. Um, we have this kind of flashback with uh, Willie Tiber and his family, um, where hold on one second, you were basically, I suppose, just kind of like being introduced to him as a normal person, like not being this larger than life character that's doing this big epic speech in front of all of Marley, trying to convince them to essentially wage, wage war on Paradise Island and the Eldians. It's just him with his family looking very sad. Now, what I found interesting about this is it appears to really indicate that he knew he was going to die like that. So uh, what I think, and I mean, you guys like feel free to go over your own theories on it. I think he made it known that he was the Warhammer Titan, assuming that during that speech, um, Aaron and the, the other Paradise Eldians would reveal themselves and kill him. So he, he knew he was there. There was at least a very good chance that he was going to die going into that. Uh, Kiki Pixie, what do you think about that? Is that what you got? I took it that he was baiting himself 
to lure out someone to kill him so that way they can push for the rest of the world to come together under one flag to take out the Paradise Island. Yeah, and I think that uh, that is probably pretty spot on. Lethal? Yeah, um, I kind of had that impression last week just based on the way, like, one particular shot when he was leaning against the wall and he looked all depressed. Uh, I didn't really think about what you were saying, though, about how maybe he was trying to convince them that he was the Warhammer Titan to bait them. I just thought of it as, you know, he's such a big target, he's going to be irresistible to not try and take out, which the, the general later says. But he definitely knew he was going to die going into this situation, and he kind of set himself up to be a, a martyr. But I just didn't think he knew just how epic his death was going to be. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that's the thing. I think that he might have leaked the uh, false, apparently, information that he was the Warhammer Titan because Aaron immediately ate him. Like, it seemed like Aaron was there to eat that guy, I assume, thinking that that's the Warhammer Titan and that if he manages to eat him before he transforms, then that would be the easiest way to, to get that power and to eliminate a, a very powerful enemy. And, um. Uh, with that, low, uh, in the previous episode, I kind of just took it as the second he said, you know, go to war was when he transformed. So it was almost like he was just waiting for him to say it and then kill him because, you know, you're the guy that said start the war, so I'm going to kill you first. But with the whole thing you're saying about baiting him to yeah. get him in there so we could yeah. eat him, I don't know about that because um, the way um, Mikasa rocked up, like the mm -hmm. whole plan there so her her attack it kind of seemed like they were trapping the warhammer titan and that was her whole point so if he was the warhammer titan that wouldn't have worked oh yeah i mean that's a fair point um it looks like x-ray girl wants to say something um x-ray girl yeah so i don't think that um he because we never got any hint that he was the warhammer titan um, from what I remember, it was like they just knew that someone in the Tiber family was the Warhammer Titan. They just didn't know who specifically. So they just assumed, I guess they as an Aaron assumed that he was the Warhammer Titan because he's the one giving the speech. It makes sense. Head family uh, of sorts. Plus, he knew he was going to die. Even I'm guessing that's his mom in that um, image knew he was going to likely die as well. That's why she's so upset. Um and then, you know, obviously we know who the Warhammer Titan, if you've watched the episode, is afterwards. So that was um, interesting to see. Plus, at Mikasa, when she had come down after uh, Aaron had emerged from the nape, she's like, oh, you decided to attack. You know, there's uh, children and civilians here. So that I don't think that was part of the plan at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm with, I'm with X-Ray Gill on that. And it was pretty cool. Like, it does seem like Aaron acted on his own in that regard. Because, like, um, Mika says talking to him, and she's like, yeah. man, you just killed kids and civilians. Like, yeah. this is yeah, a whole uh, other level. I, I was actually really looking forward to getting to that part because um, I actually kind of threw it in the description. I said that, like, this is the moment where Aaron breaks bad. <laughs> like, he, he flat out actually, like, does be like cross the line into basically becoming a villain by just saying like, yeah, no, like I'm, I'm going to kill this target and I don't care who I kill in the process. Like I'm, mm. I, and Mikasa looking around at that, like, again, we're kind of jumping ahead a bit was pretty almost sad because like you, you just, we as the audience know everything they've been through together and to have her just be like, Aaron, like there's no coming back from what you just did here. Like you, you didn't carefully just take out the Warhammer Titan guy or like the guy you thought that might have been, or if that's why, um, you you killed a bunch of civilians and children. Like you're now you're kind of a villain no matter what. And um, uh, I'll, we'll touch on that again once we get to another character. I want to just uh, point out thank you, uh, Miss Martin Muses, for the ninety nine cent uh, rose sticker. Uh, thank you. Oh, that's uh, so awesome. I'm a big fan of The Bachelor. I'm sure X Ray Girl is very happy that we just received a rose. Um, I'm not really a Bachelor fan, but uh, X Ray Girl, it's um, it's her Attack on Titan. This is what she loves for. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Geeky Pixie, uh, we, we had a little bit of technical issues with you here, but uh, what do you think? Do you think um, Aaron was under the impression that Willie was the Warhammer Titan, 
or just that he was the guy that was declaring war on them? What What are your thoughts? He might have thought that was Warhammer Titan. He was also making a statement. He wanted to prove to basically himself maybe that he was willing to do what it took to prove, you know, that the, the declaration of war, yeah, he killed children, but he was doing basically exactly what Reiner and his crew did to him. Mm-hmm. And it's going to repeat. We're probably going to see Gabby do what happened to uh, Aaron. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was hinting at, that there's a, a scene a little later mm-hmm. on that uh, is Gabby, our new mm-hmm. kind of protagonist girl, like the one that's in line to inherit Reiner's Titan, has a moment that's very similar to the one that Aaron has at uh, after his mother dies where she's like, you just see the rage in her eyes and you get the impression that for her, it's either going to be death or killing Aaron. So um, we, we have a, a an of, ante- sorry, go ahead. There's, there's a lot of parallels between Gabby and young Aaron, not so yeah. much older Aaron. <laughs> boy, boy, Aaron. Yeah. Older Aaron is effectively a different character. I, and I, I love this kind of different character because he's a different version of what makes sense for the old version of the character to grow into. Like it doesn't feel like a total character assassination or character betrayal. where just like all of a sudden Aaron's bad. Now it's uh, it's Aaron being evil. You could say in a way that totally makes sense for Aaron, Aaron Yeager to be evil. I almost called him Aaron Kruger. (laughs) It's the the nickname that he used for the first couple episodes. But but that's something this show does so well. It's up there. Like it's like, there are no good guys. Everyone has a reason for why they're doing what they're doing. You know, it's not it's not black and white. <laughs> From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> even even one of the, later on, even one of the scouts even says it goes, "No, nah, Aaron's right." Now, um, here actually, it's funny that I paused on this line. In this scene, you have um, uh, Willie talking to uh, I think uh, Magath is the guy's name, the general, the the kind yeah, of like Magath. Badass. Yeah, yeah Ma- Magath. I think uh, his. Uh, the badass general from the earlier episodes, he's saying to him here to clump together the, um, like the strategists of the military, like the, like the primary military officers to be grouped together as much as possible so that Aaron kills them or it has a, a high chance of just like essentially wiping out a whole bunch of the military leadership. And I think that kind of touched on what you guys were saying where Willie's plan is to put Marley in a state of desperation where they're, they're going to be forced to throw everything they possibly can behind going to paradise Island or presumably now not necessarily having to do that, putting everything they can, they have into retrieving the, the coordinate ability, like the founding Titan ability and stopping this apocalypse, even if it means himself and a bunch of military leaders dying for it, which as much as these guys are the bad guys, like that's that's a pretty noble goal, I'd say, and like very selfless. If he knows, or if he's pretty much, he, he doesn't say he knows. He says he's fairly certain that he's going to die. And, and I then really, in, yeah, sorry. In, in episode two of this season, um, there's a scene where there's a whole bunch of the military leaders gathered around in one room, and it kind of gives off the impression that the, the general that he's talking to in this scene. He's kind of like had it with like the way higher ups in the military going, nothing's getting done. Um, they're a bunch of cucks <laughs> in that regard, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like he wants quite a few of them to die as well because then he'll be given more military power and he's the one that's way more committed to getting the job done. But then, of course, it's like what you said as well. Um, the more higher ups that get killed in a very public and gruesome manner, it kind of just gets everyone rallied up to really go and you know kick their ass yeah like um, it almost turns this into like i, mean, I don't want to get the the stream demon uh, i'm probably gonna get demonetized anyways i got claimed like seven times for the last one i guess i wasn't oh, gonna pause on the show but whatever so if everyone wants to super chat it would be appreciated because i'm probably not gonna make any ad revenue <laughs> off the, of any of the episodes of this show i'm not gonna be good enough about pausing but um the it, it kind of acts as like a Pearl Harbor, right? Or like the 9-11 where oh, the, this could be the moment that rallies everyone in Marley to be like, that's like, this is the tragedy that we need to be inspired to actually enter this fight. What? You can't say Pearl Harbor. I, 
I didn't I didn't use the the and bad guy word. Pearl Harbor is a thing that happened. What is yeah. it with YouTube and hating history? <laughs> it's, just, it's just how you go to zero to a hundred. Oh well, you know, it's kinda of like Pearl Harbor. <laughs> well, I mean that I was I, I was just bring up the demonetization thing because um I, I used the bad guy in World War II word yesterday or no, oh, last week, um or Wednesday, I guess when we did our, our first episode Norwegians? and that No, well yes, the Norwegians are clearly the, the villains of World War Two. If Battlefield five has taught me anything, that <laughs> one Norwegian woman and her mother can take out the entire heavy water project alone. Uh but uh, that's a Battlefield 5 joke. Anyways, uh, Blue Eyed Scorpio for the 199 super chat that says pause this. It gives me the middle finger. Well, thank you, the Blue Eyed Scorpio. Awesome. But uh, no, seriously, it's appreciated because uh, <laughs> that'll make up for the, the lost ad revenue. Uh, but yeah, so um, I, I don't know. Like, I think that as a, as a strategy, I, um, I guess what would you call it? A public relations strategy. If you're trying to inspire a nation to go to war, um, I mean, it's kind of, this might really fly close to the sun, but it's sort of like the old kind of meme, not necessarily thing that's actually true, but like the Bush did 9 11 thing. Like, Why the, well, you say a wholesome meme, like the guy. I, I, I have no wholesome meme. His... I, I'm a soldier, lethal. This is how I think. Also, I know, I know, I know, I know, in his, in his, in his, in his um, bicycle. I'm just like the idea of the concept of, not the truth of, because that's not actually true. It's just you know, like a conspiracy theory. But um, the idea of member uh, leaders of a nation doing nefarious things in order to orchestrate a tragedy that then inspires its citizens to get behind a war is is something that that happens uh, that what <laughs> why is that sugar girl freaking out of this? I'm saying that like <laughs> oh, fast Steven Seagal. The super yes, chat. <laughs> Uh, Fast Steven Seagal with the $2 Canadian Super Chat that says, I'm impressed Ord's board looks so toned and muscular. Is that me today? I'm Ord's yeah. board. I, yeah. I wear my hat and I get called Tim Pool. I take my hat off and I'm Ord's board. What the hell? Like, I'm sorry. That was good. At least like the only reason I was wearing my hat on the podcast the other day is because my, uh, my hair just looked greasy and shitty and I didn't have time to shower before the show. So I, I, I put the toque back on. And we call beanies toques, by the way. But I'm like here back to what I was talking about, like the sheer concept of a public relations stunt in order to garner support for a war being orchestrated, not necessarily organic, is like a concept that we've we've heard about many times before is not necessarily true. But um, I thought it was an interesting angle for essentially the villains of this story are like what up until this season we viewed as the villains to take that they're willing to sacrifice some of their own citizens, even themselves, in order to get the rest of the world to address an existential threat. And I thought that was kind of cool. We, we could go around the, the panel, see what anyone thinks about that, or if they're just going to make fun of the fact that I'm getting the channel demonetized by talking about conspiracy theories. No, Alito, you're right. What do you think of that? No. No, you're right. You're right. That's kind of like what the whole gist was. I mean, look at that man's face. Doesn't that prove it? Well, yeah, and I mean, in this this line here, when he's saying that you've sent countless Eldians marching into your death, like, why does it matter? Like, how is how is it different if they're wearing uniforms or not? Like, so he's basically saying, why is why is sacrificing civilians all of a sudden such a problem to you if you've sacrificed so many Eldian soldiers just in like what they I think even referred to in the first episode as suicide squads. Um, what are we? And, some kind of suicide yeah, squad? It's, it's almost like we're some kind of suicide squad. But, uh, but yeah, so um, the uh, the interesting thing, though, at the end there is he says, like, all these Eldians are devils anyways. And what I love is what Mega says. He's like, yes, he's like, the Eldians truly are devils. But then he says, but so are we. And I, I thought that that was just a great line to just be like, yeah, no, we've, we've had to get our hands dirty in order to, to fight this war. And um, that kind of ties into the way Reiner's been feeling about his role in killing Aaron's mother and like killing all the innocent people in like Trost District and uh, on Paradise Island. And uh, I think it, it, it's tying everything together quite nicely. Yeah. Um, this... Any any last thoughts from everyone on, on this whole intro sequence before we jump into the episode proper? Anybody? No? Okay. So Yeah. Sorry, I had to unmute because of the baby again. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'd say safe bet just mute when you're not talking and then it's uh you don't have to worry about it. 
Uh, yeah, um, I was. I would right. say that Will wants to unite the world. Even it's divided. The world is already fighting each other. So he's trying to unite them under one flag to take out the main threat. He's doing what it takes, risking everything. Yeah. And I, I, what do you think about how that um, paints Marley, like the uh, the Marleyan, mm. I guess, military? As, uh, well, or, like the enemy is really strategies. showing there is no bad guys. Everyone is good and, and bad in this anime. There, <laughs> We can't determine who is good and who is bad. I absolutely agree. Any any other thoughts from Lethal or X-Ray Girl on that? X-Ray Girl How come we you? completely skipped over the fact that the intro to season four fucking slaps? Yeah. <laughs> Mark skips it every time. I have no idea. Or are you talking uh, about the... Uh, the, the actual the intro opening intro. credits yeah mark skips it every time i don't know what they look I, like i i have seen virgin rude virgin <laughs> trait <laughs> um yeah well legal i'm trying to manage the attention span of a woman here come on Never mind. Um, <laughs> then, then you have like a ball of string or a laser or something guess what the babies and i are leaving <laughs> <Keep enjoying. laughs> Um. Yeah, thought they thought I. I th so I had a thought. I don't know if I like complete missed it because I was sleepy. But I thought that they wanted to group all the military together so that Aaron, if and when he appears, would take out some of the commanding leaders so that they could put in people they wanted into the army. But I don't know. Did I miss that completely, or was that actually like a thing? I I don't. Oh. I don't think that's why he wanted to take out the the leaders of the military. I think he just he just took them out in order to weaken the enemy forces. Um, I I want to say though that like this is a part that I almost missed the first time through. So this one officer who's like highly decorated, he's got like like a bunch of medals and ribbons on his uniform and that sash, which probably dictates some level of position, usually an appointment in the military, you'll be given a sash or some kind of decoration that way. Everyone around him is running and he's the one that's just like, nope, we're not getting away. So if you just watch. <laughs> wow. <Well, like> <laughs> he accepts his that, death. That is a man that's just like, nope, dying a warrior's death. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I found that kind of awesome. Like this guy's just like, well, yeah, there's no getting out of this. We're fucked. <laughs> you guys run away like cowards. I'm I'm dying with my boots on. <laughs> um. All right. So yeah. No. But as this as this um kicks off, we find out that almost off screen, like immediately, um, Zofia is dead. Like off the bat, we lose yeah, one yeah. of the primary Marleyan protagonists. Just and, fucking uh, wreck. Like it spends yeah. like five episodes being like, "Hey, these are your new characters," and then it's just gone. Yep. It was like Game of Thrones, you know, <laughs> or even in the first season. That's so oh, X-ray girl, you muted. <laughs> it was just like the first season. So many people died. Why? Yeah. Like, it was just like the first season. So many people died right off the bat. You're like, okay, I'm getting know these people gone. Bye. And mm. they 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 like doing that, and like I guess this anime, just no one's safe. No one. no one. No. I was like, just getting attached to Sophia too. <laughs> but as soon as, as soon as Sophia died, I saw Gabby and I was like, "This is where she gets her motivation from. She's it, just growing it." <laughs> it's like we were saying before. A lot of parallels between her and Aaron. Mm -hmm. And look at our boy. That that's her in <laughs> ten years. You're muted. Judging by the, the timeline of the show, it's probably her within the next uh, five or six episodes, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> assuming that, you know, I think now, though, how many Titans do we have left? So um, Falco's brother there, the one that's like kind of holding Gabby, he's inheriting the Beast Titan. Uh, and it, so, uh, yeah, I guess the Armored Titan is the only other one that's up for grabs right now because Galliard um, uh, Porco... It just inherited the Jaw Titan from uh, Emir. Uh, we don't know how long Peak has been um, the Cart Titan. As so that, long as the Armor Titan, because they they were together. They yeah. Were together. Yeah. So together. and uh, wait, how many years has it been for them then? It's it's been like nine years. So uh, there's there's twelve years because twelve. Um, 
right? Yeah, Zeke. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. All right. So with if this season spans a year, then we will see three of the Marleyan Titans. Yeah, well, oh, wait, I don't know. We don't know about the Warhammer Titan either, but at least three of the Marleyan Titans will be passed on. And right now we only have three remaining warrior candidates. It's just Falco, Falco's brother and Gabby, because both Zofia and Udo die in this episode. And mm -hmm. that pretty much eliminates the, the competition on who's going to get who, because now everyone's going to get one of them. And well, although to be fair, we don't know whether or not Falco is alive. Um, we did not see Falco or Reiner in this episode, so I don't think Falco is going to have an off-screen death. That would seem a little on the weak side. But I'm um, going to uh, just quickly touch on before we advance too far. The idea of no one being safe, I think, is a perfect counterpoint to my biggest problem with the Mandalorian, where Mando, his Beskar armor just makes him too safe <laughs> to the point that there's like almost no stakes. And I don't think there's any chance that he's even in any danger of getting hurt in any episode. Whereas Attack on Titan, like, I, I think if they took out Aaron at some point during this season, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be floored and totally shocked. I think it would be a little bit strange, especially with the coordinate Titan. But if they were in a situation where, like, Armin had to eat Aaron and then Armin took the coordinate... I'd be like, yeah, that, that's something I could actually see happening in this show because they do not they do not seem to be afraid to kill most people. Although I guess the argument against that would be Armin inheriting the um, Colossal Titan because you, you would think that that would have been the logical point to have Armin die. And, oh, it uh, looks like we have another super chat story before we move on uh, from... That nobody guy for uh, $5 says, I would like to watch the Cyborg PC guy CD Projekt Red chill stream, but I haven't seen the latest season in Cheers. Thanks. Awesome. Yes, uh, I, I, I really want to stop talking about Cyberpunk. Although um, Sphere Hunter, who's a very good YouTuber, just released her um, review of Cyberpunk, and I actually I thought it was really solid. I thought it was um, quite fair, balanced. Um, she goes hard on them for where they need going hard on and is also not totally denying any of the game's I saw that. Sorry? Uh, Sorry, I saw what? Then what she did. What she did. What did she do? No. Don't worry. You, you'll have to rewatch. You'll have All to right. rewatch and see it. <laughs> Am I going to be mad at her? But anyways, um, uh, <laughs> watch Sphere Hunter's Cyberpunk video. It's, uh, it's better than mine. So... Uh, for whatever that's worth. Um, all right. Uh, so I guess here, let's go on to Magus next big moment when they're talking about, uh, so <laughs> he's given this order and he fires that shot at Aaron. Why do you guys think he did that? Lethal. I, uh, I don't know. I know he says that, Oh, let it be known. I saw the, f I fired the first shot, but it's like, really, really can't like, I don't know what he. I don't know. I really don't know. X-ray girl, you have any thoughts? Muting. I mean, if he wants to go down in the history books as being the first person to shoot, that's one way to do it. But I mean, that's just his own selfish reason to fire a shot and tell no one else to shoot. He also knows the shot's not going to do anything. So what's the exactly. point? Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. All right, geeky pixie. I think it's to probably go with to show that the army's not afraid of the Titan. I to put the to rally his point. soldiers because if when you after he pulled the trigger, his men started to stand up with him. Because before they I, were desperately scared. I think that is pretty much nailing it, and I think the reason for that, or unless you have anything further that you want to add, no, that's it. Okay, so I think that. The um the the Marleyan hero Helios or Helio, um that was that guy was known as kind of a symbol of Marley's ability to stand up and fight against the Eldians, and um, eventually led to the toppling of the Eldian Empire. Now I think that knowing have, when we consider his conversation with with uh, Willie with Willie Tiber, knowing that they're going to do very difficult things that they have to do. And him knowing that all those soldiers around him are going to need kind of a symbol to rally around. He's saying that like this one useless shot here is me showing you all that I'm willing to engage this enemy. And that he kind of says to them, like, let it be known now that I fired the first shot. 
and then walks off with his men, keeps them safe, lets them live to fight another day. But I think the these guys are going to come back with Magath as a very, very important character. I don't think he's dying anytime soon. I think he's going to be extremely important in the upcoming episodes. Um, I don't know. What does everyone think of that? Like, you think I'm way off, or does that make sense? Yeah, I think you're uh, on it. Probably. He might even become another Titan. Possible, yeah. I just think, though, that, like, they spent enough time on that Helios character that, or, like, just talking about him in the opening episodes, or the episode previous to this one, or two episodes prior, I guess, that I, I don't think that the idea of one Marleyan man that is, like, known for killing Titans is um is going to be totally forgotten and i think that like the eldian side has one and again we'll, we'll get to him <laughs> towards the end of the episode <laughs> but uh yeah okay i think we can we can start moving on from here if no one's got any other thoughts on that and i think next we're going to actually get to uh, oh i guess uh, we already kind of missed the initial warhammer titan um tightening i don't know what would you call it Forging? transformation Forming? yeah transformation <laughs> And uh, there's the first real attack from the Warhammer Titan. So what does everyone think of this Titan's abilities? It have, at least has hardening abilities unlike anything we've ever seen. It can just sort of make weapons out of, out of essentially nothingness. It, do, it doesn't even appear to need any kind of like Full Metal Alchemist style equivalent exchange thing. It can just forge things out of the ether, which is pretty insane. And uh, yeah. I thought that as far as like a unique Titan villain to have going into this season, I thought, I thought that that was pretty cool. Yeah. So, it's a nut case, man. I, the way it can just pull any weapon, it, it doesn't even pull out like a type of crossbow sort of thing as well. Yeah. Yep. So Range it's got weapons. access to range attacks as well. So this one might be one of the more gnarlier ones out of all of them. And the way like it covers itself up as well. I did find it very interesting uh, how it actually protects itself low. You know, yeah, the whole it's, trial. um, well, it's kind of a uh, weakness. It's mm. in a way it's, um, the only Titan, at least as far as any of the ones we've seen that does not have its user in the nape of the neck. It's, um, I guess we're jumping a little bit ahead, but it's, it basically constructs like a, a hardened Titan hardened chrysalis, not dissimilar from the one that any, um, winds up in at the end of season one and the user then controls the Warhammer Titan from that little like chrysalis. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's really cool that again, we'll get to at the end how Aaron figures that out too. But uh, X-Ray girl, what did you think of this Titan's power? It was very strong, but as I don't, I didn't vocalize it to Mark at the time. I'm like, there has to be a major weakness. And this is before I knew about the crystal and the human in it. Because it can't just be so strong like this. Like, you can't just be able to pull weapons out of thin air without having something. Either it takes a lot of energy to do it, or you have a major weakness in terms of, like, dying. So, obviously, that was uh, given away at the end. Um, what I'm interested to see is if they can break through the shell. Because they never said anything about Annie as soon as they captured her. So... We don't know if Annie's still around in her little crystal shell. So yep. will this character just hang around and be in some sort of impenetrable shell? Or is he going to eat her? Or I have no idea because they never got to that conclusion. So I guess we will see. All right, Geeky Pixie. Well, like uh, Extra Girl said, this thing had to have had a weakness because it was so just destroying everything. And it was giving Aaron such a hard time. And even when Mikasa blew up the nape, there was no damage. And so um, everything has to have a way, way to going down. But I don't think it's making weapons out of thin air. I think it was making weapons out of its own hardening thing off its own skin. Because we never really saw the back of it while it was making the weapons. Yeah, that's true. I think what I was saying about it um, not really requiring any sort of equivalent exchange or anything like that is it seemed to create new structures without having to like say thin out its own body mass or anything like that like it mm -hmm. didn't seem like that white like shell 
It kind of like it didn't seem like that white shell that was around it was like deteriorating as it was creating structures. It seemed like it was effectively not. I don't want to say infinite because it probably like the Titans in this show all get tired. So they, uh, they I, I can only imagine that the Warhammer Titan, especially when creating all sorts of weapons and structures, will probably tire out pretty fast. And I think that would be a pretty decent balancing um, thing to it. Almost talking about like it's a video game with mechanics, <laughs> but um, but I, I think that it um, having a very clear weak point. Whereas like if you find the user or even just find the um, umbilical cord, like the um, the umbilical cable, and just detach it, that that's a pretty crippling weakness that arguably makes it the easiest one to kill. Because think think of how easy it would be for like Mikasa to just see the Warhammer Titan from far away, be like, okay, there's the cable. All right, I'm on it. <laughs> just, just basically just slice the one cable before the thing can notice. And it's actually why I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron does successfully eat it or, or someone else eats it or, or someone on like the Eldian side, because it almost seems like once that weakness is known, it, I, I actually do think it's probably the easiest Titan to defeat in a battle maybe not kill because who knows how easy it is to bite through that titan hardened chrysalis probably not very easy which is why when aaron looked like he was about to eat it i was like is that gonna work <laughs> uh, but uh it's a yeah, capsule guess, maybe yeah, but uh, you have to eat the spinal fluid though if you don't eat the spinal fluid then it well like i mean i don't know titans don't really have digestive tracts either so it's not like he's gonna like shit the thing out i, I don't know it's, yeah, it's hard to say exactly. if, if you could do that Right, and Aaron couldn't eat it. There is another way he could get it inside him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, they don't have buttholes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I was just gonna say maybe he will just swallow it. But no, I think he was thinking suppository. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, they they don't have um, they don't have any genitalia, including including buttholes. So uh, I don't think that would work. Uh, Roger Haynes for the uh, Canadian dollar ninety nine super sticker. Uh, thumbs up. Thank you very much. I guess it's kind of that's my gesture. That's kind of your thing, thing, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> I um, actually uh, like the story behind that profile picture is actually just a screen cap from my review of the game Dusk, and it, I think it was only like I was saying something about like throwing some headphones because of the. Uh, the, the sound in that game being really good. So I said, like, turn your headphones up, and then I just kind of did this and then put my thumb up. And for some reason, it, it ended up looking really good, so I screen capped that and been using it as my, my like, primary profile picture for, like, two years now. But, nice. Uh, yeah. But, yes, yeah, so I, I approve of the thumbs up as a gesture. It's uh, it's one of the few that hasn't become racist because 4chan decided Yes. Yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, I guess I will move on a little bit because I think we are about at the introduction. Okay, I guess here we have um, Udo being taken to the hospital. All that really happens here, though, is we find out that Udo is in fact dead. Um, we actually also find out here that uh, Peek had the Peek simps uh, come and rescue her, and that she was, she almost <laughs> knew that there was something up because she told them like, "Hey, follow behind us by like about ten minutes or something like that." Oh yeah, um, she assumed that soldier was sketchy. Smart. She was. She's smart. Yeah, and then and she gives them orders to like have the cart. How can you have the cart Titan stuff ready to go? And she's like, 15 minutes." She's like, "Make it 10." They're like, "Yes, peak." <laughs> they love yes, her so much. Peak. Slay. Um, there was no new clues as to who that soldier was, but back right there, that was probably like one of my favorite moments of the whole episode the when, seeing the um the when scouts. they go over their head yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, oh shit they're well, here. Like, yeah because you, you gotta remember um like fucking ninjas like peak has seen them before but porco <laughs> has never ever seen the omnidirectional gear so he's just, like imagine having no concept of that looking up and then seeing like 30 spider-men just like, <laughs> like what what <laughs> excuse <laughs> Like I, they have zeppelins and and planes, so I guess he's uh, he's aware of flying machines. But like human beings that are like ziplining <laughs> through the city, yeah, man. like that's oh. uh, that must have been pretty nuts for him to see. And even just uh, like this attack, you know, like you gotta like imagine what Ryan is thinking because he kind of caused this to happen all the way in the first episode of, on Paradise Island, and now yep. like, it's happening at his home. Yep. And, uh, well, I don't think, I don't think he had too much of a choice, but yeah, I can imagine that 
he's probably going to assume that a, a lot of those deaths that that happened this day are are in his hands at least to an extent okay. but um yeah so that we see the um the scouts are kind of showing up to kind of help out Aaron. Aaron's broken free from that initial spike attack. So um, that just shows got, the, the cannons are getting more and more hardcore. Yeah, the cannons are getting more I have hardcore. 50 caliber. And, and um, Aaron is using Annie's move of the, yeah. the hardening the hardening the back of the hands and putting it on the nape, which um, I, I thought was a nice little callback to uh, the villain of the first season, you could say. And here we go. <laughs> this is my favorite part. What are his last words? So um, for anyone listening to this audio, um, the Warhammer Titan just said to Aaron, do you have any last words? Aaron's just staring her down, clearly with a plan. And he says, now or never, Mikasa. <laughs> Us not having seen Mikasa the entire season yet. And then a short-haired boy cut Mikasa comes out of nowhere and just throws like 10 Thunder Spears directly into the nape of the Warhammer Titan. Which you'd think would be like, okay, that's the fastest a big bad has ever been killed in this whole show. If not for the fact that like what we kind of went over before, but the Warhammer Titan having a bit of a, uh, of a different uh, system of, of control, not, not necessarily being like a Mecca that you're in the nape of the neck. It's um, more of like a remote control deal. And um, yeah. So what does everyone think of Mikas's short hair? That's what, that's what we all want to hear. <laughs> I prefer her old look, to be honest with you, but she's still a fucking badass, so yeah. that's all that matters, but yeah. X-Ray Girl is a beautiful Asian woman with long hair. What do you think? <laughs> I want, I liked her little bob cut, but I mean, she still looks cute. Can't hate her for that. <laughs> it's funny, because now Aaron has the long hair. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that. I was thinking that too. Aaron's hair is now uh, significantly longer than Mika says. I, I wonder if I think he might either get a haircut or he starts like tying it back because in the trailer for this season, it almost looked like he has like a buzz cut, but I think it might have been just back in a ponytail. Um, that reminds me. I need to send you the meme. Mark's already seen it. <laughs> there we go. Kiki Pixie, what do you think? I kind of like the short hair. It does make sense with her being a soldier. Less hair getting in the way. Mm -hmm. that, that is true it also calls back to the reason she cuts right. her hair from her super long hair in like the first couple episodes when someone says like yeah I, like how does that long hair not get in your way i think it's john says that to her and then immediately without even thinking about it she's like okay i'll cut it <laughs> then the next scene her hair is like at like her chin length or like the kind of like mid mid neck length that she has for most of the series um but yeah no uh, this that's probably the thing that's caused the most like online controversy for this season everyone's like oh mikasa looks like a dude but i don't know i, I still think she's she's effectively like best girl what do you mean she's got she looks like ada wong <laughs> yeah i know from like, resident evil I mean. uh, uh, exactly. she you can definitely like, tell it's, she's still it's, it's a little bit like exactly rukia the ada, the ada yeah. wong haircut <laughs> if you look it looks um, like rukia with shorter hair yeah I, I think that like mm -hmm. people, maybe it's just like the look on her face and stuff like that. But she's sad. Her, maybe her in the armor. Her man's been gone for four years. Yeah. Could and be yeah, also the, the armor. The armor mm -hmm. isn't as yeah. It's not super feminizing. It's a how many It's very unisex we, armor. How many times have we ever seen her smile in the whole show? Yeah, like not two much. Or three times. She has. She has smiled a couple times, uh, and I think most mm -hmm. of them are when she thinks that her and Aaron are about to die together. <laughs> Yeah. She'll like look at him and smile. Oh, look at that puppy. It's for Steph. <laughs> There's my Mikasa and my Armin right there. <laughs> Jojo's my Armin. Well, Fat Seamus uh, Girl says he doesn't see any Rukia, but if you look at her face, you can see a little bit of Rukia Kushki from Bleach. Uh -huh. I can see it. There we go. I, I've only seen a couple episodes of Bleach, and it was um, mm. around the time Death Note was still currently airing. So uh, it was a while ago. Yeah. Also very good. Yeah, and X Ray Girl and I have watched that together as well. She had, had you you hadn't seen Death Note prior to watching it with me, right? No. No, okay, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I have introduced her to Death Note and Attack on Titan. I'm taking her through the crates. And uh we're watching Full Metal Alchemist <laughs> together, but I think she's Ooh, seen, nice. You've seen Full Metal Alchemist original, right? Yeah, but I didn't finish it. Okay. And I, I have not. I'm, I'm watching it for the first time. I've seen Brotherhood in full, though, and I, I love it. It's just like one of my favorite. Brotherhood is brilliant. Yep, and uh, we will probably watch that next. Although we got Demon Slayer <laughs> on deck, I think after Full Metal Alchemist. 
Um, all right, so yeah, so Mikasa, obviously super pro star move. I think we've, we've talked about her pretty this much as much as we need. Pot. Yep, I was about to say, let's move on to the rest of the scouts, including the other possible best girl being uh, murdering people <laughs> in cold blood. Our, um, our, our mascot here, I don't know, is there a way I can like take down the share screen and show? Yeah, how do you just show the backdrop? Can oh, we do that? Me. No, that's just, that's just going to take all of us out. No, okay, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, our backdrop that you might see towards the end of the stream when we quit is um, Sasha eating a potato. Because I, I think I think best girl of Attack on Titan, it's between Mikasa and Sasha. Let's, let's face Sasha it. Sasha just jumped. I do way, like Sasha. Way, yeah. Way <laughs> she she just she just tried to uh, attack Mikasa <laughs> on the badass scale too. Now oh, we have yeah. um, Jean and Flock here. This is pretty interesting. They they have a bit of a um, of a little conflict here where um, Flock, who previously hated Aaron and thought that he basically lost the war for them by by encouraging Levi to, to pick um, Armin over Erwin. And he just was kind of like ruthlessly killing some of the soldiers. And John was just like, hey, like, we don't need to unnecessary. We don't need to kill people that we don't need to kill. And he's just like, I oh, don't no, fuck it. They're all, <laughs> they're all bad. They're guys. all enemies. Like, I, don't, I don't care. I'm just going to, I'm just going to murder people. And um, I thought that that was kind of interesting because apparently Flock is now totally on board team Aaron, even referring to him as the devil we need. Um, devil we need or needed because I think he referred to Erwin as the devil we needed and in this episode he refers to Aaron as the devil we need which um, mm. I, I thought was kind of an interesting callback do you and, know what um, I love about this part that's about to come up uh, when Megas is talking to him being like yeah you just crossed some lines it's like yeah. Aaron's blank I think face we, yeah did we just miss that I think I think we did um, um, no matter what I don't we think do, so yeah. right there just this blank face on him like, yeah. you just killed kids and he's like lol yeah, it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, I know. YOLO. <laughs> it's like that. That's what I came here to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, just so you know, Mikasa, I kill kids now. It's, uh, <laughs> hey, baby, what's still, up? I, I know you now. still love me, so don't even pretend you don't. But. I saw that again, X-ray girl. You can't get that stuff past me. Oh, uh, Gabby. I, I gotta like keep an eye on X-ray girl. Uh, I feel, I feel like you guys are dog whistling to each other. <laughs> um all right so yeah so here this is kind of an interesting parallel because you have a um an mp essentially um probably not too dissimilar from the uh the guards regiment from um sorry what's his name ha hannes hannes from the first two seasons who is um the garrison regiment guy who's friends with Aaron and Mikasa and is always like kind of letting Aaron and Mikasa get into their little fights in town and saving them when it's when it's the absolute last minute and oh, Jojo Jojo just growled tries to save Aaron's mother but then chickens out the second he comes face to face with um Grisha's ex-wife and chickens out in a way that's like reasonable like I don't want to say chickens out like he was being a pussy or something but he's like okay Am I going to fight this Titan, probably die, and then not be able to see, save this woman who's still been, like, bisected by half of her own house? Or am I just going to do what she wants me to do, which is turn around, grab her kid and her adopted kid, and run the hell out of here? And he does that. So, But my point is that there was a, there was a good relationship between Eren, Mikasa, Armin, and Hannes. And it yep. seems like they're sort of calling back to that with Gabby clearly having like a, maybe not a relationship, but she clearly knows this guy. He's not like some random dude. In one of the earlier episodes of this season, I don't know if it's that exact guy, but she has a conversation with um, someone in his position. And it's like, they're very, you know, playful. Mm hmm and we see it's, not too oh, long man. after that there's someone who's a bang. crack shot one of these scouts with very good aim possibly the one who can hit titans in the eye with a bow Bruh, and, likes, I love her now. and likes potatoes <laughs> Our sasha. Girl sasha in a I full on sasha brand now. new armor just uh, jumped way 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 up the top man like she was like down there for me before now she's like fucking queen yeah, no, she, I think she was always roughly number two for me. It was uh, between her and Mikasa. And Mikasa is just, I love her because she's just so badass. But yeah, no, like Sasha is proven, proven some badassery here. She's more than just a potato girl. <laughs> I want to, oh God. Yeah. I, I want to, I want to just, man, buy her all the potatoes. <laughs> I want to make it all <laughs> the potatoes. 
I, I want to bake a potato for her. Mm. <laughs> make oh make God. her some nice nice home fries. Mm -hmm. It sounds I'll dirty, but no, I mean it literally. <laughs> I actually want to cook potato based food for her. All right, but yeah, so, and then I think we have her, I want to say probably boyfriend is uh, supporting her here, because it seems like there's always kind of been something going on between her and Connie. Really? You know, I, know. On that. I, that I don't know. It, it sort of always seemed like they were pretty close at the very least. They, they always seem to be teaming up together. Like, I don't know. I have a feeling there's something going on there. If she's going to get together with anyone, I think it's going to be Connie. Maybe they're just friends. Oh, yeah. Because we, it's because it's 2021, and women and men in movies have to just be friends. You got a Star Wars for Force Awakens, Connie here, turn him into Finn. <laughs> Connie. For Sasha, potato is Bay. Connie is friend. Yeah. Oh, she can't marry a potato. She's gonna need someone to make friends. If it's fries Sasha, for she'll right probably right. find a way. Man. She probably puts more effort into a potato, to be honest. <laughs> As I, I think we were saying that too when we were watching um, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. That at the end, like there, there's tension between um, Gwen and Miles for like the entire movie, and at the end, it seems like they're gonna kiss, and they're like friends, friends. And I'm like, oh fuck off, kiss the kid. <laughs> he he got over his issues and became Spider Man. Give him a kiss and then go back to your dimension. <laughs> that was. I I think even on the cheek. Awesome. Oh, look at that. We got a big uh, $10 oh. Canadian super chat from uh, Saccharin De Defarin. I you got a lot of Canadians Sacharin. that watch you. This is good. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I, I am of the Canadian folk. I'm, I'm he of the North. But um, yes, he says, I'm new here, so I'm wondering everyone's thoughts on Aaron after this episode. Still don't worry, I won't kink shame with siding with Aaron's abs. Well, uh, X-Ray Girl has been a big fan of all the abs on the series, which uh, is one of the reasons why I really, really, really want to um, get rid of my beer gut in time for X-Ray Girl and I's wedding. But um, yeah, they, they've opened up the gym at my base again, so uh, I, can, I can actually work on that. But yes, um, six-pack abs are a big part of this show is what I'm saying. And he says, now that the tables have flipped, it's very conflicting. And I believe that is, yes, exactly what... Um, what the show, maybe show runners, I guess, well, more probably more the guy who wrote the anime, uh, sorry, the manga, because uh, I think that the, as far as what I've heard, it's following pretty closely. But again, I'm trying not to read too much about the manga. But I think that um, we've been touching on it a few times through the this episode where we're all really impressed with how well they're blurring the lines between good and evil. And um, there's not really a good guy side and not really a bad guy side. I think... All of us are probably still rooting for the Paradise Island Eldians, because, or at least I know I am, because those are the characters we're most connected with. But I think that, it, especially when you look at it from the perspective that Reiner and Aaron talked about in the previous episode, where Aaron essentially understands that Ryan did, uh, Ryan, Reiner did everything <laughs> he did because he thought that he was saving the world, or he knew that he was saving the world by doing it. And Reiner even admits that it's like, no, I'm not that noble. Like I just wanted to be a hero, but ultimately it's like the, the end does sort of justify the means. Like if you, if you want to be a hero and then do things that result in the entire world being saved, you did still save the world. And if you stop that person from saving the world, you did still end the world, even if you're doing it to like avenge your mother. So it is, it's very tough, and I think that it's it's one of the things that makes this show really incredible and kind of a step above like almost anything else we've got on TV now, because they're doing the tables turn, subverting expectations, like you're not playing as Ellie, you're now playing as Abby thing, but they're doing it well and like in a way that you're actually conflicted and it makes sense that you're conflicted. It's not just oh like she's friends with the teenager now, so. We no longer want Ellie to kill her, like The Last of Us 2 style. But um, yeah, I think that we're, we're all pretty much on board with Aaron being a big, very conflicting character. Unless, I don't know, you want to go around, anyone else have other thoughts on that before we move on from the Super Chat? And Nathan right. Childress said Mark is a crazy shipper. I'm not. I, I, I can just tell when there's something going on between two people, okay? I'm not saying that like Sasha and Mikasa are shipped because I think they're both cute girls. I think I've, I've seen Connie, Connie and Sasha have made eyes at each other, okay? Let's just say if I was in the Scout Regiment, I probably wouldn't be going for Sasha because I'd be like, no, I think I think my boy Connie's trying to get in there. I'm gonna, my boy I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna clear the runway 
also I have X-ray girl in this scenario because I always have you, baby. Love you. I was gonna say yeah, I that, for that Sasha. Disgusting. That is disgusting, Mark. I told you I'm super gay when it comes to my girlfriend. Uh, simp. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So yeah, I guess we can move on to, we're getting towards the end of the episode here. Like as we, okay. Now here, what do you think was going on with these lights? They're signaling. I reckon it's a signal for Levi. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. I guess I, that would be the payoff at the end. I was thinking it would be something that would pay off in the episodes to come, but, um, I mean, I don't know. Did you think they would need to signal it? Maybe if they want him to only show up when, the other Titans attack Aaron. I think it's more of just like a, you know, we've cleared our part. Like it's a signal to Levi because yeah. he's still calling the shots as far as we know. And I think based on who he's got with him, they would all look at him and go, yeah, you're in charge. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's what most people would do. <laughs> okay. So um, there now we, Oh, sorry. X-ray girl. Were you going to say something? I was also going to say that maybe it's a tool to blind the Titans from seeing, um, them fly by the the scouts i don't know i mean that that's possible oh sorry, you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> i was hearing my own voice twice um <laughs> but you guys might have only been hearing me once but um i think that that would absolutely work if they knew that enemy titans would only be coming from one direction but i think that the the issue with i guess if you're always pointing them in all directions out from the thing mm. it would give them some light cover i don't know like i mean uh, bright lights in dark environments can definitely be used for a tactical advantage because i don't know if you guys have ever been in like a like a pitch dark situation like out, out camping for example if someone turns on a flashlight when you're camping it almost instantly kills your night vision it's one of the reasons why in the army if we're doing night operations we have headlamps that have like a red filter because red light will not destroy your light, night vision the way um white light will and uh, yeah, so I mean, that could be it, but, uh, or it could be signaling Levi. But I feel like, I just feel like if it was as simple as something as sim signaling Levi, though, we would have heard more about it. I, like, I feel like we're going to learn more about what those lights were all about in the, uh, maybe the coming episode or episodes, depending on how long this battle goes on for. Because let's face it, we still got the Cart Titan to show up. We still got Reiner to show up and the Beast Titan. And, uh, I, I think that there might be another two episodes of fighting going on here before I am all said and so done. looking forward to Levi Beast Titan <laughs> rematch. <laughs> Literally the Levi Beast Titan rematch. Yeah, that'll be pretty yeah. sweet. I'm a Levi fanboy, man. It's a, a pretty solid character to be a fanboy of. <laughs> he's when he, the first time he's he objectively the awesome. <laughs> when he fought that Beast Titan the first time, it's like, mate. Should've won. He like spiral cut him like a ham. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking awesome and then there's the flashback with uh with zeke talking with reiner and he's like what you're telling me one person's gonna be a threat and they're like yep yeah. he's like oh yeah, yeah commander levi actually like flat out will be like <laughs> or captain levi you've got you've got to stay away from that one and uh well, other actors you, know, uh, you, know you know what that man does he pushes shit back for a living that's <laughs> what he fucking does it's like look, look if the last name's ackerman just get away yep <laughs> Just to be safe, get away from the lady who played Silk Spectre in The Watchmen. The last name's also Ackerman, Malin Ackerman. But uh, anyways, uh, Krista Joe says, fiance, Mark, fiance. Yes, and she knows she's my fiance, okay? She's wearing the ring. Are, are you wearing the ring? Or oh, I look stupid now. Yeah, okay. The ring of ownership. I can say I... girlfriend still. It's fine. Fiance just kind of sounds lame to say as a man. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's, it's very, like, I don't know. It's a very girly sounding word. Am, am I wrong there? Like fiance like I, I meant just not like the french i don't know maybe it's because i'm an anglo-canadian <laughs> um yeah quebec is the the worst thing in canada i'm sorry <laughs> i don't mean that i'm sorry krista uh, anyways um okay say that did they say in the episode that they're trying to stop reinforcements possible the lights are markers so they know where to focus their attention eh, no i guess that yeah, it'll make sense it'll make Zachary and Dave are in again it's um yeah i don't know very possible and also, if you're, I think he was a Canadian super chat. If you're from Quebec, just so you know, I was kidding. <laughs> like, uh, I don't actually hate the French. I work in the military. If I hated the French, I'd have no friends. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, and here, this is actually like a pretty, a pretty decent moment here where Aaron's about to take a bite of the 
Warhammer Titan. We Look see my boy um, out there standing Levi on, on top Batman. of the expended Warhammer Titan weapon, just waiting. The Jaw Titan, the one with the strongest mouth, is about to take a bite. And boom. Oh, <laughs> Levi. <laughs> What? I can't bite. What what just happened? Oh yeah, all just of your wreck. all of your mastoid muscles just broke the jaw. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Th this is probably what's gonna get me claimed because I, I have so much trouble stopping when scenes are that awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um so, and I, th I think that this time, not just with Levi being like absolutely amazing and essentially disabling the jaw Titan and then the rest of the scouts knocking him to the ground and kind and of come for the kill. Him. And it's just, it's Porco's realization here, right there. And like, he's just, he's so not used to humans, individual humans, not humans in big like trains with artillery cannons on them, not humans camped out in pillboxes or, or on battlements of castles, but just humans in the air flying towards them. And just like that's that. such a, like that flies. So like, they're like, like vultures just kind of circling around him, just ready to kill him. Now I have, a feeling, I have a feeling that Galliard is not going to die right here. I feel like uh, the beast Titan and uh, cart uh, card Titan, like peak and uh, Zeke, are probably going to show up and save him. Maybe or Reiner the armor as well. Titan. Well, yeah, I, I have a feeling we might be another episode out from seeing Reiner. Um, they just like based on what the preview that they showed for the next one, they kind of, they sort of showed Beast and Cart, but they didn't show Reiner. And I have a feeling Reiner might come to save them at like like when he's absolutely needed. And uh, there's even the slight possibility that Reiner might end up being like on the side of uh, of, of our peeps. But who knows? I guess uh, I think that's a possibility. But again, like it's hard to even view that as like a possible Reiner redemption arc if it does happen, because again, who's the bad guy? <laughs> like, what are you redeeming? Would he just be betraying his own people? Or I, because I think the only reason he would do that is if um, is if he is stricken with the guilt of what he did to the people on that island and feels that he needs to make amends. So he's like, look, there's no good side in this war. So I'm going to try to make up for what I did to all of you and all of your families. And uh, I don't know. I think it, it might end up being kind of interesting to see, see what happens with Reiner. But again, uh, if in the chat, if you've read the manga, uh, don't spoil it. My, my theory might be dead on. It might be way off base. I, I don't want to know for sure until I see it in the episode. And I'm not going to have X-Ray Girl Google anything like I did last <laughs> week. And, uh, uh, so, the but the, the good news is she only spoiled the identity of the Warhammer Titan. So is it wasn't that, that much. Knew? Is that all you knew, X-Ray that's, that's what she said, right? Yeah. That's the only thing she saw. So you, you're completely blind going into the next episode like the rest of us? Yeah. Oh, well, aside from the preview at the end of this episode, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, because I, I am making a point to absolutely avoid anything on the manga, like YouTube videos, anything. I'm, I'm not touching them. I'm trying to uh, not talk in depth about anyone that I know has read it because I have a feeling they might accidentally nudge me in a direction. And I'd like to keep my thoughts on this show to be relatively pure. But uh, I guess we'll see. And I guess here we'll just uh, play off the last, last little bit because one hell That's of a final insane. shot. With Levi, <laughs> the eyes of Levi, <laughs> extreme close up on the screen, coming right towards Galliard, and it, it, that is the only thing that makes it so that if they do kill Galliard at the very beginning of the next episode, I'll be like, well, at least they set it up properly, being like, <laughs> if if you are this close to Levi, you're fucked. <laughs> oh yeah, there's no getting away from that. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless like, the cart and, titan comes back and gets him out of there, or unless Levi doesn't want to kill him and just wants to disable him so that Aaron can eat him and become even more powerful. Um, Either but, Aaron eat him or Armin. Is, oh, I mean, that's it's sort of what happened with the the beast titan, right? And then he ended up losing him, um, which was was sad. But it also gave us another antagonist for this season. Did Levi want to just disable the beast titan, or was he kind of just wanting him to suffer because of what he did to his troops? I mean, it's, well, I, I don't know. I, I mean, he definitely did. He was kind of playing with them, you know, just enjoying and said, no, you're going to suffer. 
Yeah, I guess I, I just kind of always thought that he wanted... Because um, when he threw those rocks, them... it was killing his men. Well, but I think that if you have the opportunity to add that power to your side of a war, you sort of have to. Like, yeah. I mean, like giving it up and just killing the guy, as much as that eliminates the threat, it also it also spoils a weapon that you could have be on your side. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm not a hundred percent certain on, I'd have to probably rewatch that for, I guess the third time to see <laughs> what exactly Levi does in his battle with the beast Titan. And um, I also think that if he had more gas, beast Titan was dead. He wasn't escaping. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, sadly, uh, Levi was not able to keep up with that one with peak, the, the cart Titan, because he was uh, out of juice. Although the next episode is just referred to as assault. So I guess uh, mm. we will clearly see more, more fighting happening. So I guess, yes, oh, um, yeah. we'll try to wrap it up here. But uh, final thoughts on the episode, uh, Lethal? I loved it. I thought it was fantastic, but I felt last week's episode was slightly better. From a dramatic perspective, or um, just better. Yeah, I mean, this one clearly had better, like more, not better necessarily, but more action. But, oh yeah, um, action I think was, that action-wise, this might be the best one. Um, but last week's episode was just all tension and just like the perfect build-up, and then the oh shit moment. Yeah, absolutely. A- anything else? Or should we move on to X-ray girl? Lethal. Oh no, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, okay. <laughs> X-ray girl. I love the episode. Can't wait to see more. I want to see Armin. I'm waiting for his return because I want to see how he uses his Titan abilities because we've never seen him as a Titan yet up to this point. So I can't wait. And plus, I want to know who that soldier was. It probably was him, but you know. Yeah, I think it was Armin. Armin's too, he's got too many girls all over him. He oh. doesn't have time. To and then everyone looks a bit weathered as they're older. Like, you know, I wonder if he still has that innocence in his face. Yeah. Armin's probably just walking around with Historia or like one of the other like super hot yeah. girls on the show. He's Armin's just like, turned into yeah. an absolute G in the four years. <laughs> hey, uh, just so you know, I'm the colossal Titan. I've only got 13 years to live. Why don't we make him count? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Geeky Pixie. What about you? what do you think? I will say this episode was, definitely good but as lethal said the other the, the other one prior to this one was better with the tension it felt more like it pulled you at the edge of your seat this one was just non-stop action it did not take a break it just came at you almost like just just non-stop action just blasting at you i am looking forward to this to the next episode my theory that maybe either reiner's gonna end uh, enter the fight that or Falco's going to have the power of the armored Titan. That's my theory. That I think would be a really interesting twist if Reiner's already done and he just happened to have one of the Titan transformation syringes on him and just said, Falco, like I saved you, but like, I'm going to die now. I need you to eat me and I need you to go save Gabby or something like that. That would actually be pretty cool. I can see it happening. Cause when, Aaron transformed. They're down at his feet. So either Reiner transformed a little bit to save him or he risked his own body and now he's really badly hurt. Yeah, I'm going to guess Reiner pulled the, um, the, the saving hardening. them from the cannons mood. Yeah, uh, or the like half transformation thing that Aaron did to save Mikasa and Armin from the cannon fire in uh, season one. Like mm-hmm. I think that kind of makes the most sense that he, cause he's, he clearly had enough time to see Aaron transforming and oh, yeah. go dive over to Falco. He and saw the I, eye. Yeah. He was so, like, Oh uh, shit. Yes. And I, I think that, I think that it's probably safe to say that Falco at least is still alive, but I think it's an interesting um, theory about um, Reiner possibly not making it out of that one. And yeah, no, I think I'm, I'm echoing your thoughts, I guess, for my own thoughts here. Um, I thought that a interesting way to like kind of describe this episode is it was sort of the like Avengers end game to last week's Infinity War. Like it was definitely very satisfying and there was a lot of like cool stuff that happens in it. But writing wise, it can't really touch the like the build up episode that happened just before it. I think that by and large, um, I'd say this episode is probably more tightly written than Endgame was, but um, it's also got the benefit of just being, sorry? This sorry? coffee, 
this coffee is more tightly written than Endgame. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm not. I, I'm not saying that. I like. I'm again. I'm not saying from a uh, a one to one comparison because Endgame is also like a three and a half hour movie and or two and a half hour movie. Three hours, maybe I don't know. But this is like a half hour episode of TV, so obviously it has like the chance of being much more tightly written. But uh, the only reason um, I'm making the parallel is because the idea of having a very very strong, strongly written, very story heavy build up episode or movie leading into a much more action heavy but ultimately not quite as impactful from a story perspective um finish line or or, uh, yeah or no ending sentence i don't know conclusion yeah but um i don't know i I thought that i did think though that it was a very nice like companion to last week's episode Mm -hmm. Uh, last week's episode that had almost no action but was very very impactful and story heavy and this episode that had very little like story to it i guess beyond being like oh yeah like all these characters are still alive all these characters are still as badass mikasa has cut her hair sasha is now using guns not a bow <laughs> um like i mean there, there were things that happened but it end of stuff with the warhammer titan i guess was pretty significant but it wasn't nearly as story heavy as as the previous week it also did have much more satisfying and much more by quantity action um, so I think though that the, I don't think that anything has made me think this season is losing steam at all. I think that it's pretty much still powering ahead as one of the best shows on TV and I hope that it can keep this going and it's made it six episodes now that are half hour. So if you compare that to, I guess the hour long three game of Thrones final seasons episode, it's uh, attack on Titans winning. <laughs> Because uh, the, the the three episodes of Game of Thrones eventually got super bad, and the six episodes of Attack on Titan are still really really good. So it's, it's looking up. As long as they can stick that landing, this might might become one of the all time greats. But uh, yeah, does anyone else have any thoughts, or should we wrap it up there? Looking forward to next week. Okay, can't wait till next Sunday. So with that said, everybody, I guess um, I don't know if we're still gonna just do the like give your hearts. <laughs> and i guess uh we'll, we'll see you next week and thank you very much geeky pixie for coming on yeah and if, yep, that was uh, fun. If, we, if we need a guest on one of the other weeks we will certainly call you back because uh, awesome. i think that you did quite well we've got a uh, guest lined up for the next i think four weeks in a row though so it might be five but uh, keep keep watching the show oh yeah and, of course <laughs> all right and uh thank you everybody for watching the stream and we'll see you next week bye, bye. bye. That was fun. Oh, and I got Mark. It. It. It live. <laughs> oh, again. You muted X Ringer. Mark, you boomed it. Sorry, you I'm I'm very there, used to at the end of the game of the Geeks <laughs> podcast to just be one of the ones that leaves the thing. I didn't realize this one. I have to hit end broadcast. Anyways. <laughs>